And thanks for staying with Morning Live. On to a very somber subject now. A total of 15 learners in Gauteng have lost their lives in separate incidents uh, ranging from murder, drowning to motor vehicle accidents uh, since the 2020 academic year started just over a month ago. Now, Gauteng MEC for Education has described the spate of deaths as a bad spell and says that it's extremely difficult to face parents of deceased learners on almost a weekly basis. And the MEC joined joins us now, Banyaza Lesufi, to talk about all of these. Uh, thanks so much for coming through. Thanks for the opportunity, Sakin. It's indeed a difficult, difficult period for us, but uh, we have to soldier on. And as you say, um, you know, one almost wants to look for some justification as yeah. to why this is happening. Uh, you've gone on to say it's a bad spell. You even cut your hair. Uh, um, you know, and, and, and yeah. this is not trying to trivialize what's going on here, yeah. but I suppose it speaks to the desperation to try and find answers? Well, I went to various churches and also consulted traditional leaders and some of the people indicated that in African culture also, those that believe in Muslim uh, uh, religion said that when something of this nature uh, happens, uh, we need to also respect our tradition and uh, one of that tradition is to cut our hair because as a father figure of the children, they really believe that I should lead by example. Uh, I need to appreciate lots and lots of religious leaders that have flooded uh, our department with information that they're willing to pray for us. We have arranged few prayer sessions uh, just to hold the fort and ensure that we don't have this kind of things. It's really difficult, Sakina. You know, when the last incident happened uh, two days ago um, and, and the parents came to me and say, what happened? You know, I could see in their eyes uh, they just wanted me to perform a miracle and say nothing happened. But I had to be brave and tell them that, unfortunately, their child has passed on. Uh, it was part of the children that were in the Kumbi, and uh, we are sorry as a department. Uh, but you don't expect to do that almost uh, every second day. And uh, we remain hopeful that uh, whatever message uh, this kind of activities were sending to us, we, we've accepted. We've accepted. Uh, we are at the mercy of our Creator. And we are the mercy of those that believe that this uh, it's a temporary thing, it will pass. So, as you say, there was this accident <coughs> uh, where learners, two learners, lost yeah. their lives. There was another incident at a school in Randburg. Yeah. There have been incidents of drowning. And um, the Enoch Mpianzi case was particularly yeah. Yeah. prominent. Yeah. And I believe you received the report uh, into this particular matter. Are you at liberty to discuss some of those details with us? Yeah, it's another difficult moment as well uh, because uh, tomorrow morning I need to give the report to the uh, Ino Kumpianza's family. Uh, I'll be handing over the report to them. I'll also be handing the report to uh, the Premier of the province and subsequent to that I have to hand it over to uh, the children of uh, Pactown Boys because they also want, uh, sorry, they want answers as well. So. <coughs> And then in the evening, uh, tomorrow evening, we'll publicly then release the report uh, uh, to the South African uh, society. And then uh, just coming back to uh, the transport-related uh, <coughs> incidents, the yeah. two learners we spoke about, there was also the um, Letitia Janssen yeah. situation in yeah. Germiston. Yeah. Now, the issue of scholar transport yeah. is also a very pertinent one. Uh, because in the case of Letitia Janssen, yes, we yes. saw you taking immediate yes. action. But what is the state of play with regard to scholar transport in Gauteng? Uh, it's, it's a difficult one because we've got two forms of scholar transport, Sakina. We've got the private one that is arranged by parents on their own, and we've got the government one. Uh, with the private one, it's very, very difficult to, to manage it and control it. So what we've done now... We've met with the MEC for transport to say, let's have a summit of all of them, uh, speak to them, indicate to them what are the issues that we really believe are non-negotiable. And one of it, uh, obviously, is over, uh, overloading. It's non-negotiable. You can't justify it. And the second aspect is the, the conduct uh, of the drivers, that we really believe that we need to find a formula uh, to manage that aspect. Then we have a public uh, scholar transport that we arrange as government, uh, there at least we've got control, like in Leticia's case, uh, when the company didn't perform as expected, we terminated, uh, we removed them and, and, and said they must go uh, out of the service because we can't tolerate this kind of conduct. So 
where we have control, we can, but where we don't have control, that's where we feel that we need to pass some regulations. Mm. And um, with regard to feedback on some of the other cases, uh, you know, where learners have died, yeah. uh, for example, the situation at uh, the school in Randburg, yeah. what exactly happened there? Uh, Fendale is was, was, was a sad story. Uh, the learner, the school knew the learner very well. They, they had a health record of the learner. And I'm told in some instances uh, they've assigned a teacher that is good in first aid to, to be closer to the learner. And every time the learner had seizures, um, they will assist the learner. And the learner will go even to the staff room and, and thank teachers to say, thank you for taking care of me. But on that day, um, something went horribly wrong uh, because teachers were aware about this situation. So normally when they get out of the classroom, they'll They'll, they'll pair them in rows uh, so that they can take care of him, you know. So the first row went, he was in the second row, and the second row went, and they were quite sure that everything is fine. Uh, when the third row was about to get out, uh, they, then they hear Lena screaming, which simply means that uh, the Lena just went out and jumped uh, over the wall and uh, unfortunately passed on. And then there was uh, the drowning incident on the West yeah. Rand. Uh, yeah. Do we have any more information on that particular case? We have not received that report. I think we'll receive it next week. Uh, the team has given us a preliminary report. We have already taken action. We have suspended the principal on the base of the preliminary report. Uh, but we're going to get the full report next week. The only report is in our courts one that I said we received over the weekend and we are releasing it uh, tomorrow. MDC, what is it like for you to have to engage parents, especially in instances where their children die either on school premises or on camps like we saw with the Inokumpianzi case? It's difficult. It's very difficult. I'm emotionally trained, I must be honest. I'm, I've run out of words, you know, if I have to confront parents and tell them about their child that is not coming back from school. It's a difficult thing, Sakina. It's, 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 it's so difficult. I, I, I try I tried to be strong, uh, but sometimes we feel for those parents. I mean, I attended the funeral of uh, the Fendi Lena in, 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 the, in, so in, in Tuan over the weekend, you know, uh, to face the relatives and say, this learner died in our hands. Uh, it's, it's a difficult, difficult thing. So, we'll soldier on. It's, it's very difficult. I'm, I've never been so emotionally drained. I've never failed to control my emotions. I've never find it hard even to go to work. I enjoy my work. I go to, I mean, I sacrifice my sleep. I sacrifice friends. I sacrifice nice things just to do my work because I really feel it's something that I, I need to execute but nowadays it's even becoming difficult for me to wake up in the morning because you, 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 you have this phone phobia you, you are scared that the next message that is in your phone is another death so, so it's very difficult but uh, with the religious leaders and people that are around me um, I, I, we're coping but it's tough it's tough. I mean, for the first time in my life, I've never taken leave at work. For the first time, I asked the Premier, I, premier, I really feel that I need to take uh, time off, and hopefully the Premier will agree. And I was going to ask about, you know, the yeah. uh, psychosocial support. Um, if, you know, you as the MEC are feeling the way you do, uh, one would imagine the teachers, the learners, everybody who has to deal with this, what sort of support is there out there? We've got a brilliant team, but also we're working with NGOs that uh, are really assisting us, Sakina, I must be honest. Uh, the team that is working with us from both uh, outside government and inside government, I think they tend to accept that they need additional capacity and they've brought additional capacity and we are grateful for that because they are overstretched. As I said, 15 deaths uh, within a short space of time and four educators that also passed on. So it, it's, it overstretches their resources, but they've done well thus far. Is there anything you believe that can be done 
um, you know, are there any mitigating um, circumstances that perhaps uh, could have been implemented? How do you assess the situation? I, I'm a praying person. I really believe that uh, prayer is the, is the answer. Uh, I really believe there is no way that our creator can plant you in a situation that you can't uh, handle. So I, I really I want to thank the Archbishop. Uh, uh, Mahoba has already sent a message to the leadership of the church to assist us. Uh, I've got so many churches that have already volunteered their services. So we're looking at, a, at the Provincial Prayer Day probably early next week. We really believe that uh, it will assist us. And other uh, uh, beliefs, I mean, uh, the other people believe in traditional leadership. We don't want to close that out as well. But also we want just to set a day across all our schools and ask everyone to identify one school and go to that school and pray for that school because today we might say there's nothing, tomorrow there might be something. So we'd rather be proactive and deal with that situation in that fashion. Well, a very, very difficult subject. Yeah. And um, yeah. I just yeah. want to uh, deviate from it slightly as yeah. we conclude this uh, interview, MEC, to ask mm. about the placement of learners, whether that process has been completed. We've completed it. Um, what, what, what is remaining, which is very unfortunate, uh, is two categories. The first category is learners with special needs. Uh, that is learners that uh, suffers from various uh, physical diseases as, and emotional diseases as well. So the numbers have increased drastically, I must be honest. We didn't see that coming. Uh, I'm told the waiting list now is hovering around over a month where learners have to wait for a month before they can be placed. So we're releasing resources to deal with that thing. And the last category is learners that are not necessarily in grade 1 and 8, that are inner grades that schools needed to admit them. I think some of the schools just say we are full and then they just leave these children. So, But our team is consolidating it. We are quite convinced that before the end of this month everyone will be placed. But the numbers are very few. I think I'm told it's less than uh, 70 learners that are. We still need to finalize that placement, both in terms of uh, special needs and those that are in our grades. Well, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Panyaza mm -hmm. Lesufi is uh, the MEC for Education in Gauteng, talking to us about the tragic start to the 2020 academic year where Gauteng has seen 15 learners losing their lives in separate incidents uh, around the province. Uh, we're going to take a break, and after that, uh, we'll bring you more responses to our question of the day. <laughs>